Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. My name is Rich Sharpentier. I'm the channel host. And as always, thanks for stopping in and hanging out for a few and being part of this channel. It's really appreciated. So today I'm following up from something I did last week. Last week I did an impromptu live stream editing a very small uh, 360 business tour. And I hadn't followed up on that. We got a couple of distractions uh, last week, um, which side railed us from this project. And that's okay. The, uh, the client actually um, is not going to be available for a little bit because of the illness of unnamed origin. We'll call it that. So, um, so anyways, today I wanted to go back through because I did get, uh, I did get the 360s set up close to where I want them. So if you didn't see this uh, video from last week, I'd suggest checking it out. It's uh, right here on our videos, editing a very small business 360 tour. So today we're going to um, export the 360s from from um, Lightroom and we're going to get them over into Kula. So that's that's what we're up to today. So Kula is one of the groups that I use for my 360 displays. So my clients love the interface. I really like the interface a lot too. Of course there are a ton of 360 um, assembly products out there for web viewing so you don't have to just use Kula but that's what we're going to be using today here so instead of a live stream I decided we'll just do this as a regular video and what we're going to do here is we're going to pull up photo or Photoshop Lightroom I should say and so if you were along last week um, you saw this is a very small gallery slash framing shop in downtown Prescott um, they fit a lot into a small space very nice gallery and a uh, fantastic framing work there. So in the end, I have picked a couple. We're not going with the uh, unflag or the uh, X flag here. So when I finish things up, I will always flag them for myself for those items that I want to use. And then items I don't want to use will either not be picked or they'll be given the little black flag here saying, yeah, don't use this one. So let's take a look at these really quick. So in last week's video, we were using a Theta Z1 and we used the Theta Stitcher to, um, to make these final renderings. So this one's looking good to me. We're gonna skip past that second one and into the third one coming back into their design area. Fourth one at one of the design tables and then looking back out of the store. And then finally into their cutting room. So we didn't go all the way back into the big room because there's saws and things back there, dust all over the place. So um, we did get some still images in there and some video, but you know, we just wanted to give normal customers a view to what they might see in this gallery and frame shop. So not a bunch of images here. One, two, three, four, five images in total, but it still does give us a good overview of the store. So what I'm gonna do here is click on this one and I'm just selecting the ones that I am going to use. I'm going to go to my export setup. So I have several different exports at the ready for different uh, for different things I'm doing for clients. You can see we've got our MLS full size, MLS web ready. And what I would like to do is the full panos, or I could do the MLS full size. Both of these setups will yield uh, very similar things for me. And I think what we're going to do is go with the MLS full size, make sure it's not resizing anywhere it's not. And if you'd like to learn more about Lightroom, let me know down in the comments below. Um, we've done other Lightroom tutorial videos here as well. And this is the primary tool I use for organizing and editing my photos. For my video, that's a different story. That's uh, another media management platform called Kino. But I'm gonna go ahead with this one. We're gonna export. And once it's exported, we will not be in Lightroom anymore. I'm gonna minimize this one too. And here we go on my desktop. I do have a new folder called MLS full size. And if I take a look at these, sure enough, that's the, that's the correct images. Now I could put this right into Kula right away right now and start playing with the uh, layout, but I would like to make some very simple changes in here. So I want to get rid of the monopod footer down at the bottom of my images. And one of the best ways I've found to do that is with Affinity Photo. The brush tool that they have is simply fantastic. So 
can't say enough good things about it. And if you're looking to edit your 360s um, after you've exported them from somewhere like, like Lightroom, one of the nice features in here is we can go up to Layer, and this is Affinity Photo, by the way, Live Projection. We're going to go down to Equi Rectangular Projection. And there we go. So now we can actually see the 360 view. Awesome. And if I look down at the bottom here, I can see, yep, there's the monopod footer right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and brush this out. Very, very simple, very easy. And now that's been brushed out. Now on the layer, I'm going to go back to live projection again. I'm going to remove the projection so that we're seeing the whole thing. And now I'm just going to hit save. So that one's been saved. Let's move on to the next one. And we're going to do the same exact workflow here. We're doing the echo rectangular projection. And if we look down at the ground, hey, I'm barely even seeing that monopod there. It's not even really worth me brushing it out, but I'm going to do it anyways. I don't know how many people actually look straight down on 360 tours. For me, I don't really think that I do often other than when I'm checking out my own tours. So we put that back. I hit save for the, the uh, command S to save this. Let's go into the next layer, do the same thing again, equal rectangular projection. And let's look at that floor again. So we're definitely at a different one. We'll get rid of that footer right there. And this does such a nice job. So if you're used to working with Photoshop or other things as well, they, they do have brush tools and eraser tools and content aware tools, but wow, this one does such a good job so quickly. So the price of Affinity just for this one feature alone is worth it to me. But that's just me. Uh, all right, let's go into live projection again. And let's look down at that floor again. And I'm not even really seeing that one. So we're going to go ahead and leave that one alone. Let's go back to remove the projection on this one. I'm not even going to hit save on this. We didn't make any changes. So let's go ahead and close that. I'm going to tell it don't save. And now we can close Affinity. And now if we take a look at these, the footers should be gone in most of them. Let's take a look. Yep, so that was saved. All right. So we have everything ready to go for us here to get it into Kula. So we're going to be making a new tour in Kula, and I'm going to pull that up really fast. Let's close that YouTube channel, and I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And I've already been, I've been a customer of Coolest for over a year now. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new tour. And so we're just going to give it a simple name, the Frame and I Tour 2021. Uh, So there we go, I've got my information and I can select some images now. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to grab these images and we're just going to drag them right in. So there we go, Cool. It starts its uploading immediately for us. And so that's looking good. So even with larger size files, this does upload pretty quickly. Let's take a look. So these files, one of them is 20 megs. So you don't have to resize these for web, and I would recommend actually trying to go full size on these to get the most detail. And so we're waiting on one more, which is cute. It says okay, and it's uploading the last one. So one, two, three, four, and five, and that gets us through the whole store. And the big thing is it, it is a very good representation of what the inside of the store looks like. So all this is looking great to us. I can go over to tour settings. Right now, I'm not going to do anything else with the tour settings. We are going to go ahead and post this. And so here we go. We've only got a couple of images to showcase the entire place. And the first thing that I'm going to do is actually turn it inwards 
So if we were walking in and off the street, this would be the view that we'd be seeing. So I like that right about there. And the first thing I'm going to do is lock that into place so that the, when people come in, they're going to uh, be looking in this direction. So on the right hand side, and this is not a full class on Kula. However, if you head over to my Teachable, so az-drone.teachable.com, we do have a full series on working with Kula. And we've got a full series on doing a larger walk through a bigger building that happens to be three stories. Um, that is also an art gallery in downtown Prescott. So go on over to uh, az-drone.teachable.com and you can see those classes as well. But anyways, right now I'm going to right over here next to heading and I can actually drag this all the way out for you at this point. Right next to heading, I'm going to click current so that we're facing into the store. And whenever we come back to this particular image, we'll be facing to the back, unless I make some other changes in software. So let's take a look down here. Did we get, oh, I did miss that monopod. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that in while we're doing this. I thought I might've missed one. So maybe I didn't bring it over into, um, into Affinity properly. But yeah, right about there is where I like it. So I'm gonna tell it current again and the next thing we can do, let's take a look at this next image. Oh, I do need to save. I forgot to hit that save button. Always remember to hit the save button. Don't be like me. And so here is our second image right up against one of their design tables here. I like that. And I think I'm going to set this one as current right here so that we're looking behind their design table number one. They also have design table number two. And oftentimes you'll find the uh, Frame and I uh, employees out here working with clients, taking measurements, or delivering final products to them. So, all right, this one is at that first design desk. So, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click back, save and quit again. I'm glad that Kula gives us this reminder here. So, for image number two, to link things together, I'm going to grab the second image and I'm going to drag it right about onto this chair because yes, so I do want to add a backlink as well. So now I have this little link button and I can make this button bigger or I can change it over on the right hand side. I'm gonna change that image and we're gonna to go to built-in assets. And I think I would like to put one of the arrow keys in here instead. And I would like to make that bigger. So there we go, I'm gonna push that up Maybe we'll just push that up to 100% here. And that's looking pretty good to me. We can move it down just a bit. So that arrow is gonna be pretty obvious to folks. Let's go ahead and save that really quick. So there's the arrow that's gonna take us to our next location in front of that design desk. Maybe I don't want the arrow. Let me take a look and see what else we have. Oh, that arrow does work fairly well for us, doesn't it? And we can also pop in other types of arrows and items, or we can even put our own icons in here as well. But for the moment, I'm going to cancel that. We're going to stick with this arrow. I can always come back and edit it afterward. I'm going to hit the save button. And what I'm going to do here, because I want to see that that works, is I'm going to close the editor for a moment, and I'm going to click on that arrow. There we go. It brought us to the design desk. Now, it also offered us a backlink as well. And there's the backlink. So it put it in the wrong place. So what I would like to do is I'm gonna go back to edit and I would like it to bring us back more toward the door. And we're gonna change that image to the built-in assets. We'll grab that particular arrow. We're gonna bring that up to 100 just like we did with the other one. And actually, the white arrow against those windows is not doing so good. So let's switch over to the black arrow. And that one is much more obvious to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save here. I'm gonna hit the close button. So now we can bring people back toward the entrance area and that brings them right back to where we entered. So that's looking good to me. There's our second arrow getting to design desk number one. So that's looking really good as well. And what we're going to want to do next, let's take a look at that next image to see where it's landed us. 
So this one has put us behind design table number one and in front of design table number two. So what I think I would like to do, let's go back to the second one here, is I would like to rotate this just a little. Let's make sure we're in the edit mode here. And so let's put the next table right back here. So I'm gonna drag this into the scene again. And yes, we'll add a backlink as well. And maybe these arrows are a little too big. We'll run that by the customer afterward because it is so easy to come in here and reset the size of that. So now that I've clicked save on this, up in the upper right hand corner, I'm gonna hit close. And let's just arrow back in here. And it does, it brings us behind that table. Maybe, just maybe, we should have it facing back to here instead. So what I'm gonna do is edit, and I'm gonna go to select the current heading toward that uh, little bar room swinging doors there. The other thing that I need to do is move this backlink. So one of the things, Kula will make these backlinks for you, but oftentimes they might not be where you were hoping they would be. So I'm gonna bring this backlink right to about there. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna go ahead and hit close and let's go in front of that design desk and there we go. Bringing ourselves back out to the outside doors and there are ways to have the heading go in the direction where your mouse was if you want to. So we'll also be talking to the client about that to make it feel like more of a walkthrough. So here we go to the second image. Here we go to our third image, all looking really good. And so let's take a look now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit close. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. Fortunately, we can get right back to our own tours. So I accidentally hit close for a second time. And there it is right there, the frame and I tour. So let's click back into here. And we had left off looking back at this one. So what is the next image that we have in this series? The next image is actually looking back out. Oh yes, and a customer had walked in. So this one is also going to need to go. We're definitely not gonna be using this one. So that's something that I overlooked when I was looking at my edits. Fortunately, we caught it on this go round. So one of the things that I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, go back to the tour itself. So down here on the bottom right hand corner, I'm gonna click on edit tour. And so this one right here has that customer walking in. So we're gonna completely and totally remove that one. So there we go. And now let's go back to our tours here really quick. And we're gonna go back into, let's go to tours. There we go, we'll go back into the frame. And I, so now we only have four images, but honestly, given the size of the shop, four images is perfectly fine. So that works all right by me. And it does showcase the entire interior area. So we made it back to image number two. Here we go to image number three. And what we can do for that last image, the fourth one, that is actually through these uh, little double doors. So let's get in here. Let's go into the edit mode really quick. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, number one, make sure that that's the current view. Number two, we're going to drag the cutting room image right to there. And we will add a backlink, thank you for asking. And let's go ahead, That's the size looks good and actually using the black arrows looks a little better to me. So we have saved that, let's close. And let's go ahead and arrow in to image number four. And actually I like the direction it's facing, so that works very well for me. But we need to find, there it is, that super secret backlink and where they put it. So we need to move this around in here. While we were on location, not only did we do the 360s, we also did some video walkthroughs in the store and in the cutting room and in the framing room. So we can actually add some of those videos and stills to this overall 360 uh, 
tour that we're doing. So it doesn't have to be big and fancy sometimes. You can keep it as a small tour and still showcase everything that you want. So I'm just going to put that arrow right there. I'm going to hit the Save button here. And we're going to close now. And let's click on that arrow. And there we go. We're looking back at this one. So there is a way, uh, and we're not going to go full in depth on it, but there is a way in Kula to have it more of a walkthrough. So whichever direction you're pointing in when you click to the next area, it'll put you in that direction. So we can fix it in a static location, or we can make it feel like more of a walkthrough. So we'll talk to the owner about this and get their input on it. I just realized our little arrow angles here um, look like the uh, all of the different framing samples up on their walls. So that's kind of cool. Um, Silly things get me sometimes. What can I tell you? So I'm just arrowing back through so we know what the design counters look like. There's our way into the back area, and then we can bring ourselves back up to the front of the shop again. And we could also, if we had an image out of the shop windows, um, we could have people walk back outside. And as a matter of fact, we do have multiple tours of downtown Prescott where we could link this business to the overall downtown Prescott area. So my next step in this, I'm going to be doing some editing of the quick videos that we've done. And I'm going to take a look back through some of the still images and where we could put some hot spots in this tour that would allow people to see some of the videos and some of the stills. So that's going to be my next step in this. But I thought I'd break this out to another simple little uh, walkthrough here with you um, from the last video. And once again, that video is live stream. This time around, I decided just to do it as a straight regular video for you. So look forward to, um, we will pop some of the videos and some of the stills into another one. And if you'd like to learn how to build one of these full walkthroughs, um, I would suggest going to az-drone.teachable.com and you will find our Rico Theta Z1 class. You will find uh, I, uh, setting up tours with Kula, uh, 360 virtual tours with drones, which is actually a free class, and then uh, working with Kula and also doing a large building, uh, a large building tour utilizing the Z1 and Kula for its presentation. Now, by the way, at this moment, I could actually share this tour, send my client the embed code, uh, embed it on any of my websites as well. So we're just about good to go. And we could start into the sharing phase of these things. But I'd like to finish up the rest of the items that I'm planning on doing before, uh, before I do that finalized tour that we put up on the web. But in the end, this uh, this tour works very well, and it is uh, looking like the tour that I was envisioning for them. So I'm just going to full screen really quickly. So coming in from the entrance of the store, you still have a lot of the detail out of the windows, thanks to the Z1 and the dual fisheye plug-in. Uh, you could do the same with multi-bracketing. As you saw, we can look all the way around in here. We can zoom in and zoom out as well, so we can zoom out, and that's kind of a strange perspective when we zoom out that far. So maybe I'll zoom it back in just a little bit, but so you can get a good look at some of the detail on those things that are hanging on the wall, both the art presentations and all the framing samples. Let's go ahead and escape out of this. And so there we go. There is our part two of doing this simple 360 job for our clients. So part one, we did the editing with Lightroom and the Theta Stitcher. Part number two, we've actually built this micro tour. And step number three is going to be editing our other media files and introducing them into this tour as well. I hope this is enjoyable and informative. And please keep in mind, we do a lot of uh, drone work as well. It's not just 360s. As a matter of fact, tomorrow I'm going to be going out to a location to create an ortho mosaic of a new build site that we'll be documenting over time. So. I'll probably be recording some of that tomorrow, and maybe you'll see some of that up next week. All right, everybody, have an awesome start to your week, and we'll see you again really soon here.